Hi guys and welcome to my first Diablo 3 build video. In this video we'll be looking at a high-end Greater Rift build with very high consistency. And it's the best build that i found so far. It's a Whirlwind build using the 6-piece Wrath of the Wastes and the 4-piece Immortal Kings bonus uh, and the Royal Ring. So first let's start with the skills. Uh, we use Call of the Ancients Ancient Fury for um, Rage Generation, or Fury Generation rather. Whirlwind Blood Funnel, and this is very important because this uh, makes critical hits heal you, and it's uh, the majority of your healing um, while you're fighting big AoE packs. Battle Rage, uh, here we have a choice of runes. I use Bloodshed, I found that's the best rune for um, trash. Uh, you could also go into the fray, which increases your uh, healing by a little bit. Um, Marauder's Rage is alright, but I don't think the flat damage bonus is that great because it doesn't scale with the number of mobs around you. Uh, Swords of Plowshares is good for healing, but since we're already getting the critical hit healing, uh, I don't think it's necessary in this particular build. It's better to get the damage, and Ferocity you're not going to want. Uh, next up is Rand Bloodbath. Uh, we just want the physical rune here. Um, you could potentially go with the Bloodlust, but I think that uh, Bloodbath is the best one. Because you already get plenty of healing from your Whirlwind. Uh, Warcry Impunity. Uh, this is for Fury generation a little bit, mostly for toughness. Uh, you get 20% resist all. Uh, the uh, maximum life and the life per second I don't think is worth it here because uh, we already have very high maximum life in this build and very high toughness. Um, and I don't think you need the um, the armor or the, the fury generation because you're getting your armor from Tayguk. Uh And finally, Wrath, Wrath of the Berserker. Um, I think the best rune here is Insanity for this build. Um, if you find yourself dying, you could go for Striding Giant, but if you plan on doing high-end Greater Rifts, I think that the DPS rune is a must here. Uh, for our passive skills, uh, Berserker Rage for uh, additional damage and maximum fury. This one's uh, very important. Uh, you could go for Brawler, um, but since you're getting so much fury already, uh, in AoE packs you're going to be a max fury. Uh, Ruthless, this is mainly for the Rift Guardian and um, Yellow Mobs for 40% additional damage. Uh, Weapon Master, um, this one will give you uh, Fury Generation. So two Fury per hit for every mob, and if there's a couple mobs around you, you will be generating tons of Fury. Rampage is a 25% strength increase, and also very good for uh, both damage and toughness. Now you could do a little bit of variation here depending on how high you want to go. I don't have a Hellfire Amulet, but if you did have a Hellfire Amulet, you could potentially go for uh, also Nerves of Steel, which is basically a free death every minute. Though I think that the toughness from this build is high enough to the point where uh, you don't actually need that. So now let's talk about the gear. You need uh, five pieces of Wrath of the Wastes and three pieces of Mortal Kings plus the Royal Ring, plus a Unity for solo play, and the IK weapon, the waist shoulders are a must. The other pieces you can mix and match depending on what you have. So for the IK weapon, having an Ancient one is going to be the best. I don't have one of the new ones with Ancient's damage, so that hurts my single target a little bit, but I do have an Ancient weapon and it's working out very nicely. So this is a must have for this particular build. The other must have is shoulders, because there are no IK shoulders, so this would be uh, completing your uh, set bonus. On the weapon you want to reroll damage, just take it as high as you possibly can. And let's talk about the other pieces of gear next. So the royal ring, uh, you want a socket, critical hit chance, or critical hit damage. I think that critical hit chance is a little bit better, just because of your uh, healing from crits. And for the gem here, I put Bane of the Trapped, which is essentially a 30% damage increase 
for anything that's uh, nearby. So this is this is a mandatory gem in my opinion. Gloves, we go uh, crit chance, crit damage, strength, vitality. You could go attack speed instead of vitality, but um, since this other gem here, pain enhancer, gives you uh, attack speed for enemies nearby, I don't think it's necessary. It's better to go for the toughness. Your shoulders are also mainly toughness, so you want strength, vitality, resist all, and life. Uh, health glow bonus is nice to have, uh, just in case you know you want to grab some healing. Your helm, uh, I I did strength uh, strength vitality crit. You could also go for strength crit whirlwind damage, and I could probably get away with it in in high 40s, low 50s. Um, but I think if you really want to push, uh, it's going to depend. It's going to de depend on how much toughness you have and how your gear is. Your chest, I went for uh, strength, vitality, life. You could also do strength, vitality, reduce damage from elites, and that might be better for uh, really high pushes. Belt again is toughness, mainly. I don't have an ancient one here. I don't. I don't my gear actually isn't the best. I don't have any of these ancient pieces here. And boots, I did str uh, strength, vitality, resist all, and whirlwind. I think that whirlwind here is is the best choice by far. Okay, necklace. As I said earlier, you could go for the Hellfire amulet, which gives you a free passive, or a resist neck, or anything with high strength. And uh, crit chance, crit damage are pretty much mandatory. I have this uh, Countess amulet, which gives me arcane immunity. It's really up to you which immunity you go for. Arcane is a good one because uh, Arcane tends to do a lot of damage, I found. And so if there's an Arcane Orb in the middle of a big pack, it'll pretty much heal you up full time, so you won't die. Uh, fire is another good one. Lightning, I think, is, is also good for very high pushes because Electrified and Orbs can really hurt. For your Bracers, you want Physical Skill and Crit Chance, Strength Vitality, I don't remember um, what it's called. There is a pair of bracers with five primaries, so you might want to go for that for a little bit extra damage. And uh, while we're on the subject, it's also great to get as many secondary resists as possible. So here I have physical. Just try to get a pair of bracers that has a secondary resist just to give you more toughness. My other ring is a unity. This is mandatory for toughness in solo. Now, this is not a group build, by the way. This is a solo build. And um, I put Taeguk in here, which is also... All three of these gems, in my opinion, are mandatory for this build. So Taeguk gives you a stacking damage and toughness bonus. 0 0.5 for each stack. Mine is rank 51, so basically uh, it will give me 71 stacks of that, which equates to a lot of toughness and a lot of, uh, a lot of damage as well. And it's very easy to maintain because your ancients are dealing out a lot of damage. As I mentioned earlier, Bane of the Trapped is a nice damage boost as well, because it automatically uh, procs itself, essentially, as long as you're nearby. Pain Enhancer is also mandatory because of the rank 25 effect uh, Blood Frenzy for 3% attack speed for each bleeding enemy. And that really, really uh, adds up when you have a lot of mobs around you. So let's talk a bit about the set bonuses here, the Immortal Kings and the Wastes. Now I did want to mention that I also tried a five piece Immortal Kings, three piece Wastes. So instead of Dust Devils, we would get the 100% bonus damage. Uh, that is not better in my opinion. I think this, six, this five piece Wastes build is better uh, because most of your damage is actually coming from the Dust Devils. And having Dust Devils automatically lets you go for the uh, blood funnel healing uh, skill, or a uh, rune, sorry, which I think is mandatory. So anyway, going back to the set bonuses, your ancients last until they die, so just when you're playing make sure that they stay alive, and if uh, they die just pop them again, and reduces the cooldown on Wrath of the Berserker. So this essentially lets you permanently uh, keep Wrath of the Berserker up, which is a nice damage and toughness boost, of course. Now, uh, the waste set is the important one. So you get 40% damage reduction while you Whirlwind. And uh, do note that when you cast Rend, your Whirlwind does pause for a moment. 
so bear that in mind. But the most important rune here is, or the set bonus is Dust Devils by far. So Dust Devils is increased to 2,500% weapon damage, and they they really hit hard. They do uh, between 100, 200 plus million per tick, and I'd say this is like five to ten times higher than what your actual whirlwind damage would be. So this is the bulk of your your damage in this particular build. So um, as you can see I have 30 million toughness base. Now with Taeguk, my ancients, or, or sorry, unity with Taeguk, unity and all my procs and everything, this number can go up to 100 million. And if I went for Striding Giant here, instead of Insanity, it could go up to 200 plus. So that's a lot of toughness. Like, it's uh, it's difficult to die as long as you avoid uh, lightning and exploding fire and other affixes like that. And one of the nice things of having that much toughness is that Rift Guardians are generally... It, it doesn't matter which one you get, you'll probably be able to kill them in time. Uh, as long as it's not one like Orlash, which just spawns f fire everywhere and kills you or perdition which just charges for a ridiculous amount uh, but perdition might even be doable because of the high health uh, here are my stats as you can see my resistances are high if you want to push really high greater rifts you might get away with a little lower here maybe swapping out bloodshed for into the fray for more healing and then socketing strength gems instead of resist that's one possibility I have 50 percent base crit so with the Berserker and Blood Rage, that's 63. So that is very nice. And you definitely want high crit chance and crit damage for this build. But yeah, as you can see, my resistances are really high, so that gives you an insane amount of toughness. And lastly, let's talk a bit about the gameplay. So essentially, you want to keep your Ancients alive, you want to keep your Wrath of the Berserker up full time, and you'll be whirlwinding, whirlwinding through mobs. So uh, just make sure that you're constantly hitting something to prevent your Tegu from falling off. And um, and yeah, it's a really it's a really simple playstyle. You're basically just holding whirlwind down the whole time, uh, throwing up rend whenever you can. And uh, and yeah, it's pretty good because it's consistent. Like I said, um, I was using Raycor before. And I was able to clear 47 as soon as the patch hit with my Raycor build. Um, but even then, my single target with a hybrid Ancients build was was lower, and um, and it's it doesn't compare to this in my opinion. You might be able to if if you get the best possible Rift Raycor might still be competitive. But if you're like me and you like consistency and and not pushing too hard, not uh, getting friends to give you the highest possible keys. If you just want to solo play and um, do the best you can there, I think this build is is the way to go. So um, let's jump into a Greater Rift 49. I actually recorded the gameplay before I recorded the build. So this will be a Rift that I just did about uh, 15 minutes ago. And um, it's a solo clear 49. Uh, I don't die, and I think it's around 11 or 12 minutes. And I did get a pretty bad boss at the end with no ads. So I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any um, variations, questions, or comments, please leave them below. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy watching the clear. Bye.
Proven yourself worthy. 